We will not sit back. Um, you know, as many of my fellow speakers have said, we have much to fight for because really proposals that we dismissed as merely just the musings of a hateful, crazy, pseudo-celebrity just last year now have a real pathway to become a reality. But let's be real, even before inauguration yesterday and throughout the last five years and longer, state legislators around the country have tried to restrict access to birth control and abortion. The Congress has tried for six years in a row to defund Planned Parenthood. Women in many states and even here in California continue to not have access to reproductive health care and abortion services. So this fight is just beginning, it has been ongoing, and it will continue. The difference now is that we don't have a veto pen, we don't have the usual avenues to stop these cruel policies from going forward. And already, as many of you know, the Congress has moved to defund Planned Parenthood and to take away the ACA. We have to stop that. And when talking about Planned Parenthood and defunding, it's clear to know that Planned Parenthood doesn't get a check just for existing. We are paid for providing services to the community. Communities that seek from us breast cancer screenings, birth control, STD testing and treatment, and in many places, male care, primary care, and other preventative health care services. here in California alone, and 200,000 in the Bay Area. This is a grave concern. We cannot let that happen. And these are patients who have nowhere else to go. The most vulnerable, the lowest income, folks who have nowhere else to go. And make no mistake, these attacks are entirely politically motivated. These same people who propose to take away our birth control say that they would like to stop abortions from happening. Why take away our birth control then? These people say that they promote women's health care. Why take away our breast and cervical cancer screenings, our preventative health care services? It's hypocrisy at its finest, and we have to stop them in their lies and their hypocrisy. And doing so will take the collective power of everybody here numbers, all of our voices. We need to be unrelenting and unmoving in this fight. This rally in March is just the beginning of longer term resistance that we'll have to sustain for as long as necessary. And what we can do to keep this going is to stay vigilant and vocal. When you leave this rally today, I ask you to call your congressional representatives and keep doing it. They need to hear from us every single day. Every day on all of the issues that we care about. Keep yourself informed and actually, you know, go to istandwithplannedparenthood.org or istandwithpp.org to find out how you can get involved with, with Planned Parenthood. Um, but find out about other organizations. I think that's how we're going to sustain this. We need to get involved with organizations that are doing this work and have been doing this work for years. And then finally, share your stories. Please share your stories. We need to that exists around women's health care, that exists around abortion, so that we won't be questioned ever again, so that we won't be paused or judged when we are trying to make the best choices for ourselves and our families. <laughs> to close, I'll just echo what everybody said again about that we will resist the onslaught of attacks. We will not go back. Planned Parenthood was founded 100 years ago last year, and we are resolved to stay open for another 100 years and more. <laughs> Finally, I've always heard that a woman's place is at the helm of the struggle, and because we get things done, right? And today proves that. We will lead, we will organize, we will win, and we will not go back on the progress we have made. Thank you. <laughs>